Hey guys, I'm here to read the next part of The Secret Lake. I'm sorry I've been forgetting to post this. Life is crazy with a puppy, I guess. Okay, let me see here. Close this behind this. Okay. Chapter 7, The Time Tunnelers. The moment they, they were out of sight, Tom turned on Stella. Tears of frustration clouded his eyes. That is our house, he said crossly. Why did you go and say we live in Australia? I'm going to tell Mum. He lurched forward as quickly as Stella tugged him back. Tom, listen, she said firmly. You're forgetting something, aren't you? The lake? The hole we climbed down? Don't you see? Tom looked bewildered. Stella paused, trying to think of how to make him understand. She took in a deep breath. Tom, look, I do think that is our house, but, well, not at the moment. Look, don't ask me how, but that tunnel we found seems to have taken us back to our garden in past time. That's why everyone's wearing those funny clothes. You're bonkers, said Tom. No, I'm not, said Stella. I think the boat you dug up in our garden came from this time. I think it's the one we rode across on the lake today. Our garden must have had a lake that dried up. Tom, who had started chipping with his trowel at the back of a tree, stopped what he was doing and slowly turned to Stella. Wow, he said brightly. His brown eyes almost doubled in size. We're really in the past? That's so cool. He then gave his big sister the biggest of grins. Stella, who was thinking what a fantastic adventure this was, put her arm around Tom and kissed his cheek. Come on, let's go home. We'll come back another time. Moments later, they were heading back through the woods towards the lake, sucking on fruit polos and laughing about the ladies' ridiculous long skirts. I wonder what happened to Harry, the dog said Tom, as they retraced their path. I, wa I wonder where that boy we saw is gone, said Stella. He must be the thief. And she sucked thoughtfully on her sweet. To Stella's relief, the little boat was still there when they emerged on the lake bank. Tom sat opposite her, peering towards the far side through his binoculars as she rowed them back. He was starting to feel hungry, and they had left their lunch boxes by the log up on the mound. You first, said Stella. They stood at the foot of the tree they had come down. Stella gave Tom a leg up, and he quickly grasped onto a nodule and started climbing. Stella followed him up into the shade of the vast branches. Where are you two going? They after you too? bellowed a voice from below. Stella was so startled, she nearly lost her footing. Clinging on tightly, she looked down to see the scruffy boy, looking up at her. Keep going, Tom, she called, glancing back up. It's the boy who stole the silver. They'll be coming for him. Immediately, Tom started scrambling more quickly up the, through the dense branches above. Stella quickly followed. Higher and higher they went, all the time expecting the darkness to envelop them. But the tunnel didn't appear. All they could see was clear blue, clear blue sky filtering through the last remaining branches above. Stella's heart sank. Tom, the tunnel's not here. We'd better go down, she called, trying not to sound scared. Thud. Stella landed beside the boy who was sitting with his back up against the side of the tree. Thud. Down came Tom, binoculars, trowel, and all. So, said the boy, smiling, looks like we's all in trouble. He paused briefly as he looked them up and down. Then he pulled the funniest of faces. What them outfits you wearing then? You from a circus or what? We're not in the, in it, we're not in any trouble, thanks. You are, said Stella sharply. She didn't trust this thief one little bit and clung tightly to her iPhone in case he tried to steal it. I'm hungry, said Tom. I wish we'd brought our lunch boxes, Stell. There you go, lad. 
The boy reached into a large paper bag beside him and held out a hunk of white bread. How do we know that's not poisonous, said Stella. You are a thief, after all. They told us all about you in the garden. The boy sighed. I never stole nothing. Yes, you did, said Stella. You took some silver. It's lucky they didn't arrest us. The boy slowly shook his head. It ain't true, he said wearily. Stella frowned at him suspiciously. Look, sit down, will yer? And let that boy have some something to eat. Something to eat. There's loads here, and we ain't going nowhere till the sun goes down. I'm Jack, by the way. Nice to meet yer. Despite what she'd heard, Stella couldn't help liking Jack after all. He had a warm smile and friendly brown eyes, and most importantly, he seemed concerned about Tom. Soon they were all chewing on the soft white bread and listening to the chatter of the birds in the trees. So why do they say you stole something if you didn't? asked Stella. Jack shook his head slowly, then started to explain how his father, Jacob, had been one of the builders of the houses in the gardens and afterward did regular building work for the Gladstones and the other houses in the garden. How one day, after some silver went missing in the house, he was falsely accused of stealing by one of the servants and sent to jail. How he was now free, but was a broken man with no one to recommend him and without any of his work tools, which he'd kept in the Gladstone cellar. Finally, how he, Jack, had snuck into the house to try to retrieve his father's tools to help him. Pa lives for his work said Jack, and without it I don't think he'll go on much longer. He'll die of a broken mind or else hunger, that's for sure. And if it ain't that, we'll all end up in the workhouse. And I wouldn't wish that on anyone. The children sat in silence. Stella held her knees and stared at the ground. She felt terrible for having called Jack a thief. Anyways, Jack went on, that's when I sees Crawley stealing silver from the Gladstone. Tom frowned suspiciously. Suspiciously. That horrid man we saw in the garden? You saw? Crawley take the silver, said Stella. Sure as I can be, said Jack. See, I'd snuck into the kitchen through the garden door to get to the cellar when I heard someone coming. See, I'm trying to read it like he's saying it, but I can't do a British accent. Sorry. So I slips up to the back stairs and immediately spots Crawley acting funny coming from one of the rooms. Looked like he was carrying something under his jacket. He never saw me, but he disappeared right quick down to the garden. Saw him with me own eyes from the balcony window up there. Jack described how he'd gone to look for Crawley in the garden and how, within minutes, half the household was chasing him across the garden calling him a thief. How did you manage to escape? asked Tom, his eyes widening. Jack started to smile. Now there's a story. I was what, running towards the trees when all of a sudden I sees the moles me pa told me about. And I swear it was just that moment when them folks stopped chasing me. They thought they'd lost me, but they weren't that far ahead. But I weren't that far ahead. That's why I decides to row over, just to be on the safe side. Moles? What do moles have to do with anything? Said Stella, frowning. I'm not sure, said Jack, but I knows they special. He sat up straight and smiled proudly. It was Pa who discovered them. On the first day, they set to prepare and yawn land for building. Whole place was shrouded in mist. Then out of the blue sees these moles scuttling in a circle not 50 feet away near a group of trees. Tom and Stella stared wide-eyed at Jack. Jack went on. Of course, when Pa told everyone else, they all said he was mad. Moles don't come out in the daylight and all. And they certainly don't run around in circles, neither. Everyone made a joke of it. But he knew they meant something special. Carried on seeing him right up to when Gladstone threw him out. Jack, I've seen the moles, too said Stella excitedly. I saw them through Tom's binoculars when we came down the tree. 
I thought I was imagining it. And I saw them in our garden when we first went looking for Harry, chipped in Tom. And just before we found the tunnel. I thought I was dreaming, Stell. Jack looked confused. Your garden? A tunnel? What are you talking about? Stella hesitated for a moment, then took a deep breath. She somehow knew that she could trust Jack. It's a bit hard to explain, Jack, she said, and I don't really understand what's happened. But, well, see, Tom and I, we're not from this time. We're from a time in the future, the next century, actually, and we live in the Gladstones' house there. Jack opened his mouth to say something, but the words carried on, tumbling on, out of Stella's. Oh, except it's not one house anymore. It's been divided into flats, and we live on the lower ground and raised ground floors. But we still have the same shared gardens, minus this lake, that is. It's all dried up in our time. She gave Jack a very broad grin, hoping it would ease the shock. Are you kidding me or what? said Jack, screwing his face up in disbelief. Stell's telling the truth, said Tom eagerly. And when we were looking for our neighbor's dog, we found the tunnel with a ladder that brought us here. And just before that, I saw some moles. Jack sat shaking his head. Hey, I wonder if the moles make the tunnel appear, said Stella suddenly. Actually, that makes sense, doesn't it? Moles make holes right? Your father must be right, Jack. They are special. Jeepers, said Jack, smiling and shaking his head. Ain't nothing gonna surprise me no more after this. Nippers traveling back through a time tunnel and all. Can't wait to see Pa's face when I tell him this. Tom was beaming from ear to ear, but Stella was suddenly looking serious. She shifted awkwardly where she sat. There is one slight problem, though. She said, the tunnels disappeared. That's why we came back down. She pushed her hair behind her ears and studied her feet. I suppose we'll just have to wait for the moles to appear again to make it come back, don't you think? In fact, Stella was terrified that the moles would never return and that she and Tom would be stuck in the past forever but she wasn't going to let on. Must be, said Jack quickly. Must be. He seemed to sense her fear. And seeing them moles looked after me, I'm sure they'll look after you too. Anyways, I'll wait with you both till they come. I ain't going back over there in no hurry. Stella, relieved, began smiling. Jack leaned towards her, peering at her iPhone. So whilst we waitin', what's that thing hanging out your pocket then? Here, try it. Stella switched on some music and passed it over. As she placed the earphones into Jack's ears, his smudged brown face expanded with delight. Jeepers, he shouted. You got people in here or what? And <laughs> what? And I do, I don't know how he's saying this sentence. I think he's saying, how do you do that then? So, he put the headphones in his ears, and Jack is like, how did you get people in that little, this little thing? Because he doesn't understand phones or music on a record player. Even a record player, I mean. His eyes grew wider and wider in disbelief as his mouth fell wide open. And as the sun finally set behind the trees, Stella and Tom fell about in fits of laughter. That's the end of the chapter, and I'm kind of worried about them. Their parents are going to be looking for them.